So um, now we would like to introduce continuous restore. Um, you know, why are we, you know, introducing this new feature? So, um, you know, as we mentioned, there's there's in the in the previous slide when we mentioned multi-cloud first, um, and maybe not even if it's multi-cloud first, but but more and more companies are looking at multi-cloud strategies, or even if you're going into your first public cloud, but you've you've had a traditional uh, on-prem data center for years, you know that by definition you're in two clouds. You, you know you've got your on-prem cloud and your public cloud, and so now you've got all these increased requirements for being able to migrate between these two different environments, you know, both from a, maybe from a test dev, uh, uh, sorry, a test dev point of view or different staging environments and then going to production, but then also from a protection point of view, you know, you, you once you've deployed things, you need to have a good disaster recovery plan in place. So, you know, even if a, if a cluster goes down or if a region goes down, you have the ability to quickly recover um, to another region, uh, as an example. Um, so that so, so that's the, that's kind of the landscape that we're planning towards. Um, and then and then, you know, so in order to do that, you know, what are the issues in, in doing that to be able to have, you know, copies of your applications moving around these 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 different environments and being able to recover those in minutes and seconds and 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 not hours. Um, you know, you need this to work to, to be storage and cloud agnostic because every cloud provider, you know, uses different components for Kubernetes storage and, 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 and you know, ingress, um, you know, the clouds, you know, it's all Kubernetes at the end of the day, but there's, there's inherent differences um, on how you do certain things like storage, ingress and other things between the cloud providers. So you need to account for those, those differences. Um, this is all part of the Trilio Vault for Kubernetes platform. Um, it was designed from the cloud, ground up to be cloud native and to live in all of these different environments. Um, we are cloud agnostic. We work all, across all the public clouds. We work across all of the distributions of Kubernetes that have been certified by the, the CNCF. Um, so, and, and then what's the, the value of this? The value of continuous restore is really, um, you know, removing these dependencies on the underlying storage. You know, if you want a plan in place, as I mentioned, to go from an on-prem um, to a public cloud where your st underlying storage is different, you know, you need to remove those dependencies and those challenges and have a tool that works across those, those different storage platforms. And then the other key piece of continuous restore is the time it takes, right? Everybody is trying to get to this this, uh, you know, zero downtime, as low downtime as possible. So we need to do things, this continuous restore really helps get that recovery time objectives down as low as possible. And we put some numbers around that that we're publishing in an ebook next week that we show that using continuous restore can lower that recovery time objective um, by up to 80%. So how do we do this and what does this look like? So over on the left, I'm showing, you know, you have maybe an application running in private cloud. You're using Trilio to back up this object um, into an external uh, storage target that can be um, anything that's running S3 or NFS. So in the public cloud world, it's, it's usually some type of S3 or, you know, blob storage in Azure or, or Google cloud storage. But now with continuous restore, when you go to restore that application, you might have a lot of persistent volume data. You might have some volumes that have terabytes of data. And to restore that data, it, 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 no matter how you slice it, it just takes time to move terabytes of data, especially when you're moving from one availability zone to another or from one cloud vendor to a totally different cloud vendor or moving from on-prem up to a cloud vendor. Just moving terabytes of storage, you can't get around you know, based on network latency, um, you know, the amount of storage, provisioning those new volumes, filling those new volumes with that storage, it just takes uh, any IT system time to do that. So what we're doing with continuous restore is those that persistent volume is the longest piece in restoring your data. Restoring the metadata in Kubernetes happens very quickly. So what we're doing is we're taking that long period of time, which is the persistent volumes, and we're saying, hey, what can we do to reduce that time. And what we're doing to solve for this is we're pre-staging the data in target clouds. So now with Trilio, with continuous restore, 
you create a backup plan as you would have done with the product previous to this, but now you have an additional uh, configuration on that backup plan to say, hey, I want this to be a, a continuous restore backup plan that I define in this example slide. I want to define three target clouds that I want to pre-stage this application. And then what happens is as you add applications or as you add backups to this, we are then going to reach out to those target clouds and we're going to pre-stage that persistent volume data on those clouds. And then as this third application comes in or the third revision of that application comes in, that data is just continuously being pre-staged on those target clouds. And then when the restore happens, so whether this restore is from a, you know, maybe a disaster has happened in this first cloud, you know, maybe in my example, if that availability or that region goes down uh, over on the left, you've already got that data pre-staged over on the right in, in your target clouds. You execute, you, you use Trilio to execute a restore. And now you're just restoring the metadata, which is very small files. Those pods are going to come up. They're going to attach to those persistent volumes that already exist in that cluster. And, and as we mentioned, it's going to increase your recovery time by up to 80% because all of that data is all um, pre-staged um, and, and, and ready to go. So with continuous restore, you know, what would that enable your business um, to, to, to do or to do better? Um, disaster recovery is, is number one, just in, reducing that recovery time by as much as possible. And you're able to quickly recover from that disaster that happened in the first cluster. Um, but it's also, it's not just about when bad things happen. You know, there's all kinds of um, scenarios that we hear from customers every day with just application migration. You know, I have, you know, customers might have, you know, three levels of different dev areas. You know, you've got some dev clusters, and then you, maybe you've got some, some staging clusters where you're kind of running an application in a pre-production area for a few weeks, and then you want to eventually move that production, and then you want to go in reverse order. You know, something's been running in production. You don't want to touch the production system, but you would love to get a copy of that and put it back into a dev system because maybe something's not running right with it, or maybe you need to, you know, experiment with some new features based on production data. Um, so there's all kinds of scenarios for why you would want to move applications around different Kubernetes clusters. And Trilio uh, enables you to do this, and now with continuous resource, helps you to do it even faster um, because you're pre-staging all of that data. Um, so we talked about the, the test dev environments. Um, so um, Kubernetes at the edge is a topic that we're hearing more and more of. Um, so some applications are being designed to use small Kubernetes clusters on the edge, maybe with some larger master cl uh, clusters in the core. Um, and so you might want to have the ability to have those edge clusters maybe collecting data and sending that back to kind of your core clusters. Um, so you could use continuous restore to, to do that in an automated fashion, do that more efficiently, having that data just continuously streaming back from your edge sites uh, uh, back to your core sites. Um, you might want to have a scenario to have um, to, to, to use this feature to do coordinated application updates, uh, maybe even in, in, in that edge use case. You know, maybe you've got um, you know, dozens of edge clusters and you, you go to do an application update, you need to roll out that, applic that application update to those dozens of clusters. So using continuous restore to have, you know, you're defining those targets ahead of time so that when you do, you know, the backup of your new version of the application, you can then, you know, continuous restore is then pushing that out automatically to those target clusters. Um, so, uh, security and fr forensic um, scanning. So as you're, um, as this continuous restore data is sending back, so Trilio does not use any proprietary format for our backup files. We're storing all of our backup files in open Linux for formats um, so that they can, we can enable you to do other things with your backup data like security and forensic scanning analysis. So you can be using continuous restore to, to be sending that data back to a backup target um, and, and then using a security tool to, to scan that uh, for ransomware, as an example. Uh, uh, Blue-green deployments. Um, so we, we hear this is a, um, 
an application deployment trend that seems to be getting a lot of traction. A lot of teams are using this to test and roll out new versions of their applications. Um, so you have a you know a green uh, you know green deployment as you're running version of production. You have a blue deployment, which is your the next version of your application. Um, and, and it's a method for um, you know de deploying the new version of the application on the blue with everything um, with the new version of your application test to make sure it's running, but you have green as a as a backup in case something goes wrong, run that for some period of time, switch that to the new green and go back and forth. Um, this works great in a in a stateless environment. Um, it, it, it's pretty straightforward to do. But when you start adding stateful applications into Kubernetes and you have a lot of this persistent data, and especially if it's large amounts of persistent data, this deployment method it, it doesn't work very well. Um, but with Trilio and Continuous Restore, we think that, that we can make this a viable deployment method with stateful applications using Continuous Restore. Because when you um, have that um, blue deployment, but you need that, you know, the, the, the green production data, you're able to use Continuous Restore um, to, to send that data and pre-stage that data on, on, the, on the blue deployment. And um, and then automated um, disaster recovery um, testing. So you know we've we've heard from a lot of teams, um, you know, that say yes, we have a disaster recovery plan in place, but to be honest, you know, we haven't really fully tested it, or we've only just you know tested piece of it, pieces of it. Um, you know, it's it's not a best practice that that you should be doing. You you should have some kind of regular testing of of your DR plan. Um, and, and it just with Trilio and Continuous Restore, it 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 really just makes this really easy. I, I mean that the, as we mentioned, those backups are being continuously pre-staged on on these on these DR clusters, so it's easy to automate that testing. You know, you've already got you know five or ten copies, whatever you're defining your policy for. You can quickly maybe it's once a month you do a restore on that to, to test that that restore process um, is working because you you, you definitely want to uh, test this and, and and not wait for the actual you know disaster to try this out for the first time. So, okay, so we're going to give you a, a preview of what um, continuous restore looks like. So we have two clusters here. I have a, a, a cluster running in Google. We're calling it, a, it, the name of it is GKE3. So I'm using this as an example of my source cluster. I'm showing that I have an example WordPress application running in this cluster. So I'm using Trilio to discover that application. And I can see I have various components of this application. Trilio is showing me that it's unprotected at this point. So I need to set up a backup plan um, for this application. So I go to create new, I go to create a new backup plan. I'm doing, I'm going to do a namespace level backup. So I'm going to back up everything that, that uh, uh, in that namespace. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to select an S3 uh, target to store my backup files to. And then we have some other advanced configurations that you can add um, database hooks. Um, you can assign policies uh, for how often this is going to be backed up. Um, you can assign retention policies for how often you clean up um, your backups. And then we have other um, advanced options. In this case, I'm going to do um, a label uh, backup where I'm backing up the um, a WordPress label. So it's capturing all the objects associated with that. Now the new feature is this continuous resource. So now I'm selecting a remote site that I want to pre-stage that data. So in this case, there's a site called GKE5 that I want to um, pre-stage that data to. And then I'm going to define a continuous restore policy. And what this policy says is how many sets of that data do you want to have on there? So I'm going to create a consistent uh, set policy of four so that I have four copies um, of my data. So basically the last four backups will always be on that remote cluster. So, um, so I'm going to finish setting up the backup plan. So now that the backup plan is in place, now what I want to do is I want to start creating backups based on that backup plan. So now I'll go to say, create new backup. Um, this is just a confirmation of what, of what your backup plan will be doing. You can see it'll, it'll be backing up that, that WordPress application. So I'm going to um, give a name for the backup. Now this is a on-demand backup is what I'm doing here, um, but you of course can put this on a schedule. So it's, you know, it's doing it every day. 
every four hours, um, you know, whatever your, your business policy is for backups. So I'm going to give it a name here and we're going to watch the status um, as this backup is being created. So we have various stages where we're doing metadata, um, we're doing image backups, and then we're doing the data snapshots and the data backups. So, um, so now as this backup in, is running, um, when the backup finishes, it's going to do um, how a normal Trilio backup happens. But now what we want to do, what I'm doing on the bottom part of this screen here is I'm, I'm pulling up a, a kubectl command line of the target cluster, which is that GKE5 cluster. Um, because what I want to show here is that, um, so the, the backup is still running. So you can see that indication that the backup just finished. So all of your data is safe on that S3 target. But now what continuous restore is going to do is as soon as that backup is finished, now continuous restore is now going to reach out to that remote target and it's going to start writing that data to that target. So you can see on the kubectl on the bottom, when I do get consistent sets, that's a, that's a custom resource definition that Trilio installs in that cluster. You can see that some consistent sets are starting to be created now. And then at the top, we also have a, a UI of the consistent restore. So if I go to the UI and look at the continuous restore UI, um, and look at some details, you can also see in the UI, but so from the CLI or the UI, you can see on the UI, you can see the status of that consistent set being created. So you can see all the data is being pre-staged, the snapshots are, are getting ready to go. And so this is, um, so now down at the bottom, if I, um, now that this is finished, you see that I now have a consistent set available. You can see the data size. So that's how much of that pre-staged data that I have ready to go. And so now I have um, you know, one good um, restore point that's ready to go in that target cluster. Um, and so you can see from, if I go back to my continuous restore dashboard, you can see that I now have one um, successful inbound consistent set. And so now I wanna go, um, I, I want more than one, you know, I, I want to, you know, this, I want this to be rolling over a period of time. So I have multiple restore points to choose from. Um, so now what we'll do is we'll go back to the um, source cluster. We'll check on the status. We see that um, we do have one available backup now, but what I want to do is I want to create more than, than one backup. Um, so you can see that the status now is one. I'm going to run um, th this backup three more times. So I now have a status of four backups on the source cluster. And again, in the background, because that backup plan is using a continuous restore, as each of those backups is being set, again, this is just showing the status on the source cluster, on the monitoring tab, um, that I've had four successful uh, backups happen. But in the background, continuous restore is for each of those backups, it's pre-staging that data on the source cluster. So now if I go, uh, sorry, on the destination cluster. So now if I go to that destination cluster, GKE5, and I look at my consistent sets, you can see I also now have four consistent sets that matches with those backups that, that I had in the source cluster. So now um, I, what I wanna do is I wanna recover from a disaster. You know, I wanna restore an application. So let's say something um, has gone down in GKE3, I want to uh, execute a disaster recovery in GKE5. So I'm doing a, a, a consistent set restore. So I do, uh, you know, launch a restore. It, uh, the UI shows me all my consistent set um, restore points. So I'm going to choose one to restore from. I'm going to go into the restore screens. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to choose what namespace I want to restore that to. Um, I have advanced options that I can choose to transform that restore. And then when I'm happy everything, I click the create button and my restore is started. So now I'm going to be quickly recovering from that disaster. You can see um, on the status screen that we have a restore in progress. We can pull up the cube CTL uh, command line and we can show um, what's happening there as that restore happens. So as that restore happens, um, we are, we are re redeploying pods. We are uh, deploying those persistent volumes, attaching those pods to those persistent volumes. And now if we go look at the application um, discovery, we can see that now objects are being deployed in that cluster. Um, all of the same WordPress objects, the replica sets, deployments, services, um, persistent volumes. 
So you can see that um, from the UI and you can also um, see that from the CLI. So now if we now look at that namespace and we do get pods, we'll see that those um, the WordPress and the WordPress MySQL pods have been created. And then if we look at the persistent volumes um, in that namespace that are that are connected to those pods, if we do a git PVC, we'll see that those persistent volumes are done. Okay, so um, demo summaries, just to summarize um, what I just showed in the demo. So um, we're showing this new feature, continuous restore, which is an addition to our backup plan policy. So it's an, it's an additional option that you can set on a backup plan to say, hey, not only do I wanna back this up to my S3 bucket, but I want to reach out and pre-stage data on some number of, of target clusters. And so then what I did was, um, I had one target cluster that I defined a backup plan. I created four backups and I showed you how that, that process works of how Trilio is then pre-staging four sets of, of that data on the target cluster. And then I simulated that, you know, a disaster happened in the first cluster. I need to recover from that disaster. So I then choose one of my consistent sets that I want to restore from. And then I executed a restore and my application was back running very, very quickly in, in, in the um, uh, target cluster to recover that application and get um, everything back up and running again. 